Yes, he was born with spina bifida. He doesn't think of himself as a, as a person with a disability. He just thinks about his abilities. So yeah, he's really positive and he takes that positiveness through all of his interactions with people and to his sport. He was telling you at the Canada Winter Games watching him, he was, you know, had a kidney infection and that day was the day he won the bronze medal in the last 10 meters against the man that's been competing for 25 years. Yeah, just the man's experience and everything and Ethan just wanted it. So he just worked really, really hard for it. It was so impressive. Well, I would train like five to like seven days a week and the training sessions would roughly be like two to two and a half hours long of either in the gym or skiing. Like I just ski laps for two hours straight to get distance in and then doing gym work like sprints and uh, strength training. So it was mostly like two, my training sessions were around two hours winning that bronze medal considering how hard the competition was there. So I, f I was very proud and I felt like my work had finally had brought something to show for it. Well, we had to find, like I broke my sit ski and we had to get that repaired from Pemberton. And then we had to like do a whole lot of research and uh, fundraising to get money to go and get all the equipment. So those were some challenges. And then finding snow started to become a challenge when the snow kind of went away near the coming up to the competition. I just, I have to be really tuned in with how my body is feeling and if I need to go on antibiotics or, and I have to eat certain ways and make sure just to keep my kidneys and my body healthy. Uh, we're going in, I'm going to nationals and uh, there's not as much funding to go there as there is Canada Winter Games. So I think there's not very many athletes who will be competing against me there. So the competition will be a lot easier than uh, Canada Winter Games. So Ethan just, uh, Ethan's been a busy guy this year. So he's been to all sorts of nationals in the U.S. and Canada, Canada Winter Games. And he was uh, meddling in the Canada Winter Games in Prince George just, uh, what, 10 days ago. And he just won two golds at nationals in Thunder Bay. So we're so proud of him. There's a variety of grants that I'm hoping to access, as well as some fundraising in our town and maybe even looking for sponsorship so that we can be funded. Ethan has three big events next year, one in Vermont and one in Germany, and then nationals in uh, Whitehorse. We became a ski and snowboard program in 1999. Uh, there were a few small incarnations up in Whistler before that. Um, and then in 2005, we became a registered society and started to grow into a full multi-sport organization. Paralympic, it means parallel to the Olympics. So it is a, a movement that mirrors what happens in the Olympic movement, but it is for individuals who are, have a sensory disability or a physical disability. And, uh, and just like you would in the able-bodied system, you start at your first contact with the sport, and you follow a long-term athlete development plan right to the Paralympic Games. Ethan's situation is not unique to individuals with spina bifida, but it is a degenerative um, situation he's finding himself in. So. So as a typical kid, he was out skiing with his mom and dad, doing all sorts of sports. But as he started to need to transition to being seated um, every day in a manual wheelchair, um, his mom came to me and I actually sat down with them in a local coffee shop and we went through all the different sport options that would be available to Ethan and what his transition within a sport context would look like and came up with a recreational plan for him. Um, what's really cool about Ethan is, you know, he did try alpine skiing. He is continuing to alpine ski. He has a new sit ski coming through a grant, which is fantastic. And that's really his family sport. But he also came out to a Nordic sit ski clinic and he really, really enjoyed it. And, and in the Paralympic movement, finding a 15 year old <laughs> is like finding a unicorn at times. And so uh, the Nordic guys were like, Ethan, if you want to go somewhere, if you want to train and you want to, to follow this long-term athlete development pathway, we could pretty much take you, you know, through to higher level competition within a very short period of time. So within two years, he's gone from touching his first Nordic sit ski to being at nationals and winning gold medals.
My, my big long-term goal right now is 2018 Paralympics and just to compete in that and then continue competing and hopefully be a Paralympic champion. That was talking about how I had to transition from stand-up downhill to uh, sit-ski downhill and then sit-ski cross-country. I haven't lost a BC race yet. He's probably one of the more fit kids at his high school. Uh, he's training in the gym all the time. He's really taking this on, and it's given the family um, an opportunity. To, you know, whether he was standing, whether he was seated, it's, it's something they can grab onto and gravitate to as a family and carry forward. And uh, and I think you know it's going to be a sport now that even the younger daughter is going to be more attached to into the future. People don't know that the Paralympic Games is actually the second largest sporting. Um, event of its kind in the world. So the Olympic Games obviously are the largest, but the Paralympics, you know, are huge. So you get 4,000 athletes showing up in London, for example. So it's massive. When people hear these stories, I think it, it gives them the opportunity to say, hey, wow, okay, well, if this person can do it, and this person's getting off the couch every day, dealing with their day-to-day, -day, making sure that it all works, and, you know, having that opportunity to go out and still train those 10,000 hours, it makes the rest of us all sort of sit up a little bit straighter and say, hey, okay, what am I doing? And how can I be excellent in my own life? He was probably skiing by the time he was two. Yeah, just between our legs and getting familiar with it. And yeah, and then um, he did do a bit of cross country skiing, but he actually hated it at that time. And he transitioned into a wheelchair when he was 13. And he had, start, he had been homeschooled prior to that. And then once he started school, it was became quickly apparent that he needed a wheelchair to get around town, to get around the school, keep up with the schedule of things. And um, he transitioned into the wheelchair and then started cross country skiing in a sit ski. And once he was in the sit ski, cross country skiing, he just loved it and felt very empowered. What I've observed is that in the face of adversity, no matter what it is, he seems to get stronger and stronger. And I just, I'm in awe of it.